What is going on, everybody? Uh, Nick Ashler here back again um, for another film session. And this week, we're going to be covering our first quarterback of the group, Matt Corral. And in general, while I, I finished my evaluations and all the quarterbacks I'm going to do, because um, it's a pretty weak class, but Corral stands out as one of the better ones. Um, and when you look at Corral, you really need to factor in the potential and the upside that he has. Um, He's not a perfect product right now. He's not going to be a perfect product for a couple of years, but I think if he gets into a good scheme and he's going to be able to develop, he's going to be a very good quarterback, and I'm going to try and show you why, but also show you why he's not there yet, if you understand what I'm saying. So jumping right into it with this first play, we're going to watch Alabama and Arkansas. This is Alabama. Um, it's just going to be a quick uh, play action RPO type play where it's a draw play to number 11. Number 11's running a slant here, and he's just going to get it to him. Uh, it's a pretty easy, simple concept, um, and we'll get into why I don't love that, why I would rather see him make more progressions. But um, uh, but I, I do like how he how he performs it with phys physicality, or not physicality, but like physically with his mechanics and, and whatnot. So let's just get into it. Um, like I said, it's just going to be a simple play action. He's, he turns his feet and his hips as soon as that happens. So he finishes the, the play action. He's going to keep the ball. And then he's going to flip his hips to where he has to, right? And then get his feet right where it's supposed to go. Decent throwing motion. Uh, he doesn't. He's not too long. He's not too tight with his uh, throwing motion. Um, so that's pretty good. Um, I like his anticipation here. Again, so we're going to see him release the ball right here, right as number 11 is making his break. And he's going to be able to throw him in stride. Number 11 doesn't really have to stop for this pass. Um, good zip on the football as well. We're going to see that there. Gets the ball out pretty efficiently and is able to get it down the field. Um, this is going to be a first down, I believe. Um, for for Old Miss, and that's just a simple play that you can use to get that first down. Lane Kiffin utilizes a lot of that with this, this, his RPO system, um, and and one read type plays, and Corral's a master at it. Next play here, we have a good tight window throw to the sideline. Uh, this receiver down on the at the top of your screen is going to be running just a simple like go route um, down the sideline, and Corral's going to be able to get it out and get it to him with a good tight window throw, and that shows the upside of his accuracy. Uh, as we get further into the film session, his accuracy we're going to debate over and have some some uh, good talk and discussion about. But right here, we see um, Corral is able to get the ball out well and get it placed well. So we'll watch it here. Good follow through with his feet, right? Watch his footwork. It comes fall throughs. Um, he's going to stick it and really let that pass fly through the air. And good pla placement. We're going to see it in the cartel view in a second. Um, but really good placement of being able to get it to his receiver's back shoulder um, and just being able to find it there, right? So right here, it's a, re it's a little high of a throw, so I'd like it to come down a little bit. But as a whole, he's going to be able to get it to where only 13 can get it. This DB has really good coverage against him. Uh, but Matt Corral is able to throw it right to where he needs to be on the sideline to be able to secure this catch. Um, and that's an NFL catch, I believe. I, I, it's really hard to see with the, whether it was one or two feet, but I think it was two feet. One thing I don't love about this play is let's watch Matt Corral stripe on his helmet and see where it goes. Where is Matt Corral stripe on his helmet the entire play minus the first second where he's just looking, trying to read that safety off of it? Right here the entire time. And there's one receiver on that side. And if we watch the safety right here, we're going to see him move to the center of the field following his coverage assignment and kind of where Corral's um, eyes were and then we're gonna see right now you can see right as Corral turns his helmet to shift this way it's his feet his feet are crossing over and starting to move this way right um, that's the downside of having a one progression system it's you're broadcasting where you're gonna go with it with that ball and to have one receiver on that side and really staring him down the entire time is not going to help you be able to read safeties, especially if, when we're going to go deep. We're going to get into that later. When you go deep, you're going to be you're going to need to look off the safety better. Um, but still, a good throw, good uh, accurate pass, and decent mechanics through it. Again, we want to stress those mechanics. Uh, Matt Corral has very good mechanics, so good play overall. Just again, the progressions is going to be a, a question. Here we're going to see what Matt Corral does well, and sometimes he can make these progressions, right? So he's a super inconsistent prospect in that sense, but right here he does a really good job of being able to make the progressions, and once this camera's going to get out of the way, again, we're going to watch the stripe on his helmet, and we're going to take it through. So he looks over here first to his one side, then he moves to the center of the field, watching this safety in this general area of the field, also keeping 11 out of the corner of his eye, and when 11 makes this break, he's going to hit him. Um, so... 
The progressions aren't too advanced, but he at least looks to one side of the field to try and give the safety a different look, and then it's going to look this way, uh, keeping 11 in his peripheral, uh, which is where he's ultimately going to go with the ball. Again, it keeps the safety guessing, right? Because if he was going right here to 11, this safety would be coming down to make a play. But since there's another receiver over here, looking just right at that safety is going to help him, is going to confuse the safety a little bit and say, which way is he going to go with this football? I need to react to it better. Um, rather than him just staring this guy down, number two is going to come fill and would likely get a pick if he just stared that down. So we see upside with that and we see good um, ability to to make those progressions at times again it's not a super advanced progression per se but it is a, a progression of some kind so i think there needs to be improvement done but there's work there that suggests that, that improvement can't happen otherwise what you're looking for on this throw it's a really good throw he throws just a pretty simple out route right here um be able to anticipate it right when this receiver makes his break he's going to get it out throw him with a good amount of i mean that's really where the ball's going because if you lead him too far to the sideline that five is going to come in there and get a pick um but good job being able to get hit him well and then be able to leave room for upfield um yards after catch again also we see this pocket is kind of collapsing this right tackle is having trouble with number 20 here and uh this right guard is having trouble with this one tech or three tech so the pack pocket's kind of collapsing what i like though is matt crowell's going to be able to keep his head down or his key keep his eyes downfield and be able to not get distracted by that pressure all right and this next like three drive-ish uh, game film for Alabama is rough because Matt Corral gets pressured almost every single play and that is rough for him when he gets pressured a lot and there's a lot of pressure on him he gets rattled pretty easily um, and that could potentially be a weakness and an inconsistency that we see in Matt Corral's game right here uh, I don't love the pocket awareness number 20 is going to come out or number 48 rather mid Fidarian Mathis is going to come off and be able to get that strip sack on him kind of I think it's an incomplete pass because his ball was going his hand was going forward but Either way, put pressure on Matt Corral. He doesn't sense it, right? There's a really clear open lane right here that if he sensed that and he felt it coming from his right side, he'd just step up and be able to deliver a check down route here or wherever the, wherever else he may want to go with the ball. Um, but regardless, he doesn't sense that and he's just going to sit in the pocket and think he can make a play. Uh, whereas in reality, he's going to get hammered. And that's where he starts to get rattled. So while I did like his poise in that last play, once he gets pressured enough, that poise kind of just deteriorates, and um, you see the result here of him starting to get rattled, and we'll see it later on in the film session. And this is why I like Matt Corral, right? This is the this is the upside that we see in Matt Corral here, and this is going to be a great escapable. He escapes really well from this from this pressure, and he's going to be able to move outside of the pocket and get a throw downfield. And historically, when we see elite quarterbacks, when we see the Joe Burrows, when we see the Russell Wilsons, we like them because they can get outside of the pocket and make big plays. Zach Wilson was the same way, and that's why I love Zach Wilson so much. And while he didn't have a great first season in New York, he's showed promises towards the end of the season. This is ultimately what I think Matt Corral can become. Uh, so we're just going to run it. Um, he's going to get pressure from the interior, but he's able to escape out of it, sense it, and then move to his to his left, um, and then reset his feet. That's important, right? Some if if quarterback isn't mechanically sound, they're going to get out of this pressure and not be able to reset their feet. Corral takes the time to reset his feet and gets a ball downfield. Uh, we haven't talked about Corral's arm strength yet, but it's very good. He can get a he can get a pass downfield pretty easily, and for the most part, that pass is pretty accurate. That's great coverage from number five, uh, being able to close close on that ball and whatnot. But for the most part, I think that's pretty much in the bread basket. Again, if it's perfect, it'd be in the end zone. I don't love his deep accuracy, but it's decent, and this is a good example of it just being decent. Um, but still, the main thing is the escapability and the ability to stay up and set his feet. That's really good work from Crowell, and then also to get that ball downfield. And this play right here is sort of a broken play, but we can learn a lot from broken plays, right? So it's going to be a pass interference on the defense. Corral throws it really far out of bounds. Um, but what we see here, again, going back to my point of he gets rattled easily, this is towards the end of the game. This is towards, I think, mid-third quarter, late third quarter. So we're getting there. Um, Corral's been hit a lot. He got a hit a lot in this game. There's some crazy stat that I don't know. If you know it, make sure to leave a comment down below. But um, he got sacked and hit a lot this game game and this is an example of him seeing pressure and having it back up on his back foot right we saw corral last play be able to set his feet and make a good play this is the exact opposite kind of um his feet aren't 
too clean right here, right? We see that, and then he has to throw off his back foot, and it ends up put it, pushing the ball so far out of bounds. Um, it, it, even if there wasn't pass interference, it wouldn't really be catchable for 13. So again, we're kind of seeing the, the inconsistency show out with Matt Corral. Again, he gets a little rattled here. A decent job of sensing the pressure and evading it, but it's a little early, right? Um, sort of. I mean, th th this this t offensive lineman really got beat pretty hard by 15 here, but um, Corral backs up too far and has to throw off his back foot, being forced to make a bad throw there. Um, if you throw that any far in bounds and it's, it's a busted play, there that could easily be a pick. So just a couple things to be aware of. I don't love his deep accuracy right here. It's not even in bounds. And the pressure kind of got to him at the end. One thing we haven't talked about with Matt Corral yet is his mobility. And we saw a little bit of it with his capability in that one play against Alabama. But... Matt Corral's one of his biggest upsides is his athleticism, his mobility, and here's a great example of it. If you want to put him on a designed run, you can, and this is a great example of him being able to dodge out of tackles on a designed run, good ball carry vision to, to kind of stay patient and let the hole open up, and then he takes it, keeps moving, breaks a tackle and breaks another tackle, and is able to get a good gain uh, and move the sticks here for a big first down for Old Miss to get inside the red zone. Um, just a great example of Corral being able to use his legs. Uh, he does this pretty frequently. A lot of designed runs, a lot of if the, if the play breaks down, he's able to use his legs to get out of the pocket and make a play. Um, so just a simple example right there, but a really good one in my opinion, of him being able to use his legs um, to extend the play. And that dual threat is crucial on the next level. We see it, we see it with almost every quarterback these days that they are able to use their legs to extend the play and make and make a good and, and make a good play um, and you see some of those outside of pretty much Tom Brady a lot of pocket passers in this day and age don't get too far um, Corral is not one of those guys he's going to be one of those guys that can use his legs to make plays and this play right here is a really great play from Corral um, we're going to see him use his intelligence to pump fake and uh, and it's going to be able to get this receiver open. This receiver is just going to run a bubble screen, whereas this receiver is going to kind of run a fake slant and then up, so a sluggo. Um, Corral does a really good job of, again, faking it to draw both of these defenders. It's pretty much a man-on type scheme. So he's going to be running over here to grab this screen, whereas this guy is man-on with this guy. Um, but he ends up screwing up and missing, and missing an assignment because Corral pump fakes to the bubble guy which pushes him to have to come make a tackle on it which leaves the sluggo wide open corral does a great job of reading it and being able to get the ball in the air um so he pump fakes there and is going to get the ball in the air with pretty good touch accuracy could be a little bit better it's a little further out than i'd like i mean you really want to hit him in stride right here uh right on the numbers but then again he's going to throw end up throwing outside the number really good play and is going to be able to get his guy into the end zone um, good read, good play, good arm, right? We're going to see a good arm strength, good zip. There's no deficiency or underthrow right there. Um, and that can be a hard throw to make. I mean, he's from the the right hash to the left numbers. That's a long throw to make, especially that far downfield. Just shows off his arm talent and his decent-ish ball placement there, um, as well as the read. Um, I, I really like that route, and I really think that's what Corral can do on the next level. This is another really big pass that he makes. He makes a lot of these big passes against Arkansas, and it's a super good film to evaluate to see what his strengths and weaknesses are. Um, this play right here, for example, he's going to be able to sense the pressure, step up in the pocket, and deliver a good ball downfield, right? Um, especially in a tight window, um, and we'll get into that, why that's a tight window in a second. But first off, he's able to sense the pressure. He's able to find the pocket and step up in the pocket. That's an important trait to have. Not many quarterbacks, or not every quarterback, rather is going to be able to step up in the pocket and make a play um corral does that well here and he's able to hit him pretty with a good amount of accuracy that's their second point right accuracy right here is pretty spot on um for the route considering the route it, he does a good job of being able to get the ball right to the receiver right on the numbers good arm strength good zip uh, and is going to be able to fit it fit it into a relatively tight window with the db not far behind and the safety coming in Third pro the third thing, which is a problem, is the safety, right? Uh, we'll actually try and get to the... We'll, we'll, let's just watch this safety, number one. We're going to see him move over here because Matt Corral is only looking on that side of the field. And let's watch his stripe on his helmet here um, from this cartel view and also watch what number one's doing. So he's already broadcasting over here. This is where I'm going to throw. 
number one is already moving his hips and starting to float over there. And then Kral's gonna, and he's already halfway over there. He knows where the route's going. Um, so Kral's gonna step up in the pocket, keep his eyes that over there and make a throw. Again, that early broadcasting and mean mugging of your receiver is gonna sell you on a lot of plays and better safeties and more ranger safeties are gonna make a play on that. Um, so, I'd like, again, I'd like that to improve. I think he could stand to improve there. And he's not a bad decision maker. He doesn't make dumb decisions. I think he's pretty safe as a whole, but it can potentially lead to that, especially when the competition and the intelligence level of these safeties are a little bit better on the NFL level, uh, which is why I think he's going to need to learn and develop how to make progressions and play out of a pro style NFL offense. And I mean, these last two plays that I'm about to show really just exemplify how I feel about Corral as a player. Um, This first play, we're going to see a really big arm throw right downfield um, right there. But he misses it by about a mile and almost throws an interception there. Um, It needs to be better. Again, the, the deep accuracy is super inconsistent. Reminds me a little bit of Deshaun Watson coming out from 2017, uh, which shows it can be fixed because it's Deshaun Watson when he's on the field is pretty good. But um, just a really, I mean, he had the right read. It was a good play downfield. He had enough separation to score a touchdown there. Um, but as a whole, you have to put better touch on that and be able to get it into the receiver's hands. You got to give him a chance. You can't let that interception happen. And once again, um, if we, yep, we have cartel view here. Let's watch his eyes. Let's watch his stripe. Looking off the safety first, which I do like, but then he's going to he's gonna um, broadcast it to this free safety number seven, right? So he's looking him off. He's looking this way. He's just dropping into his basic coverage. And then he moves this way. Seven is able to get downfield and use his range, which is pretty impressive from seven. Um, as a whole, I mean, that, that's good range from seven of being able to cover that ground and get down to the end zone. But I'd like Corral to do a better job of maybe he knows where his receivers are going. He knows where the route's going. He knows where he needs to place the ball right on that pylon. Um, he could it, could it could serve him well to look over here a little bit and put that safety in a worse position and then turn and throw it because he knows where he's going to be. He know he's thrown to a spot. He knows where it's going to be. So I'd rather him make better progressions here rather than uh, look off the safety for maybe a second and then go right to his to his read but still a big arm throw you can't knock that down i just need better accuracy and a better progression out of it and here we go last play of the game um we're gonna see what i want to see out of matt corral consistently let's just run the play and we'll get into it beautiful football right there and that's gonna be a touchdown um let's talk about what he does well first right so he's gonna take the ball He's going to look this way to try and look off the safety and linebackers. You're going to see 31 start to flow. You're going to see number one even turn his hips. Once he figures out that the hips are going to be turned, he turns to his actual target. Again, he knows where he's going to be. Delivers a, like, oh, my God, that's such a good ball. Um, Just in stride, the receiver doesn't really ever even have to slow down that much. It's just really in stride. Uh, Not much effort to to throw that ball downfield. Good mechanics, good follow-through, good throwing motion. The perfect play for Matt Corral, in my opinion. Um, And I I think ultimately that's what he can be. And I think that's his potential. And that's super, super polarizing and super fun to watch. But it's whether or not... The question is whether he can get there or not, like many other quarterbacks we've seen. So as those last two plays really showed you, there are two sides of Matt Corral right now. One side, you want to see more from. One side... Um, you love and you and you think he's going to be the next great quarterback in the NFL, the next franchise quarterback in the NFL, and it's a weak class this year, and and teams are gonna teams that need quarterbacks are gonna be really looking for them. Matt Corral is one of those top two, top three options. I think right now there's three options. You got Matt Matt Corral, you got Kenny Pickett, and you got Sam Howell. Um, Corral is the most boomer bust. Pickett is the most safe one, and Howell is another boomer bust one. It could really go either way, but the the point is. It's really about when you're when you're looking at a quarterback at the top of the draft. It's really about do you want to play it safe this year or do you want to gamble and do you want to potentially get a, a really high end starter? Do I think Matt Corral is going to be an amazing like number one player in football? I don't I don't think so. I, I think he's just going to be a really a decent top twelve to sixteen quarterback, um, and I I think that's fine for a lot of teams. Do I think he can elevate you to a Super Bowl? 
uh, not right now, but I think he could definitely develop under a good offense if he can learn those pro style if those pro style reads. His mechanics are great. His accuracy for the most part is great. Um, his arm strength is great. His mobility is great. One thing I didn't mention earlier is his durability. He's had ankle issues, and he had an ankle issue in the Sugar Bowl. Um, so that's going to be looked into by prospects, and that could help. That could get him to fall. Um, but I still think, as a whole, Matt Corral puts together a really solid game of football. Um, he seems like a good leader for this old Miss squad, and I think he could potentially be a really good leader on the next level. Um, he's going to need to take some time to develop. I, I, I think he'd be best suited with a team like the Saints, maybe, uh, where you could start Jameis Winston for a year, or maybe like the Broncos, where you could start Drew Locke or Teddy Bridgewater for a year and let him go in. Um, I really don't hate that idea. So as a whole, I do like Matt Corral. Um, I think he needs to clean up on a lot of stuff, and he's pretty inconsistent. This quarterback class is not what we're used to in terms of quarterback classes. But There's no Joe Burrow or Trevor Lawrence or Zach Wilson in this class. But Matt Corral is a very good player, and I think he should be um, one of the top like quarterbacks in this class. So if you enjoy this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Um, I really appreciate that. And again, keep keep the support coming. I really appreciate all of you guys and all my subscribers and all the people who watch my videos. Uh, make sure to comment your thoughts in the quarterback class and Matt Corral down below. Uh, and I'll see you guys soon. Peace out.